welcome to the English with Kirsty podcast from www.englishwithkirsty.com. Here I'll be sharing with you tips, information and other learning resources so that you can improve your business English. episode 185 of the English with Kirsty podcast. So this is another single episode and I want to talk about some of the things that I've noticed with companies who are trying to help their staff um, by getting them English training but it doesn't always work out so well for them and I want to look at some of the things that you should think about so whether you're somebody who's responsible for other people's learning um, specifically if it's language learning but um, some of these tips can also be applied to learning different kinds of skills and if you're not the manager of a team or a team leader or something like that, then you can also apply these to your own learning too. Um, but I wanted to look at this because a lot of the people who come to me aren't doing so because their um, companies aren't providing any opportunities for them to learn. They're coming because something isn't quite right or something isn't working out for them. Um, and so I thought I'd look at some of these um, problems that people have and some ways to fix them. Obviously, one way you can fix them is I do offer training, English training, and people are welcome to come to me for that. So this is, you know, not exactly a hidden sales message because I do offer the service that I'm talking about. And anyone who wants to find out more about that can come to my website, um, which is englishwithkirsty.com. And there is information there in English and German. But this isn't just a long sales pitch. There are things here that people can think about, um, take away, um, and some techniques as well, some things to, to try and give people an opportunity to use their language skills and to practice them in a way that doesn't feel as daunting as some of the things that people are being asked to do. So there's a number of tips here, a number of things to consider when you're either looking for training or looking to develop your own skills. Because I think it is a thing that's happening more and more now. There are more conversations in English, either because companies are doing more business with English speaking countries or because they're doing business with other countries and English is the easiest language to use as a business language. Um, and I think that a lot of the time people say, oh, yeah, I can do that. But then when they actually have to start doing it, they realise that there may be some gaps in their knowledge. So maybe they were good at English at school. Maybe but some of the things they have to do at work now is a bit different from those situations. So there may be some gaps in vocabulary or that kind of thing. So I've got a list of things to, to consider here and I'm just going to go through them. So the first thing is really to listen to people because it's easy to think, OK, everybody in my team needs the same training, but that's rarely the case. And often it is cheaper to buy one set of training for everybody to attend as a group but cheaper isn't always better if you've got people for whom that is too easy or too difficult you know if you lump everybody into one big group and it's a very um, different set of skills to start with that can be quite difficult for the people in the group because they know that maybe everybody else appears to be better than them it doesn't mean that they are better than them because some people are just not very confident but, but have really good skills but pushing everybody into the same group irrespective of their language level is generally not a good idea because some people may get bored, some people may feel frustrated and some people may just find that what you're doing is irrelevant because they know that information, they need help with something else. So training needs assessment is really important to see where the gaps are in the team as a whole and where the individual gaps are and what people feel are the areas that they need the help with. Um, I remember when I was younger and employed rather than self-employed, I one of my managers sent me on a course that nobody of my pay grade had, had been sent on just because all the stuff that they were doing was irrelevant to me and my job. And so rather than me not having any training, I, I went with some of the more senior staff to get a qualification which was relevant for me, but it, it wasn't what everybody else was doing. It was something that was relevant to my job. And I think it's when employers can think about what individuals need as well as what the whole group needs, that's, that's a way to have better results across the team. So number two, um, think about whether there is a possibility of allocating a budget for each individual rather than 
for, for a team because a couple of the people, a company that I regularly work with, um, allows their staff to identify training for themselves and then will will pay for that if if they can make a, a case for it and um, show that it is a reputable training provider and that the training will meet the training need that they have. But it means that the individuals are more invested in the training because they've gone out and, and found it themselves rather than being told this is what you have to do. So, yes, it can be more expensive if you're not paying for for group sessions. Um, but it also means that that budget that's been allocated for the individual is used by the individual for something that is useful for them. So your company may or not allow that, but some companies do and, and it often works well for them because it's, it's focusing on the individual needs that a person has rather than just um, what is assumed that the need of the whole group is. So number three, also consider whether group training is the answer because um, in some ways it can be. It can be team building as well as um, developing skills and helping people to learn information. If you do stuff with a group of people who happen to be your team as well, sometimes that can really strengthen the relationships in the team. But sometimes it's just um, more difficult for people to be vulnerable and to express that, that they have a need in a certain area if they're with people who they manage or um, their peers and that they don't want to appear um, less competent in front of their peers. So people don't want to embarrass themselves and sometimes they just withdraw from the training. So they're not actually getting the benefit anyway, because they don't have the confidence to ask the questions about the things that they really don't understand or they don't want to say, can we go through this again in front of people who appear to already have understood and, and want to move on to the next thing. And that's that's easier if you're with a group of strangers than it is with people whom you're supposed to be managing. So number four, look at the methods. Um, I work with a lot of people who come to me because the course that their company has paid for won't allow German to be used in the sessions. So opinion is divided about that. I do use German in sessions where there are only German speakers. I think it's not very polite to do it if you have speakers of other languages there. But if you are specifically training one or more German speakers and you speak German, then I think it's OK to use that and it can be helpful um, to facilitate understanding so people can ask questions, all that kind of thing. If they're not sure about something, um, if they want to check about some vocabulary, there are just so many ways um, why I think it's useful. But many of the larger language schools in Germany don't do that and they employ people who don't have those skills anyway so that they are monolingual language teachers. That's fine, that's their choice, but um, it doesn't always work for people who aren't able to follow some of the explanations. So I do have people coming to me, even though their companies are paying for some substantially more expensive training, but where, where German isn't used. So it's always good to, if you're going to invest in training, to look at the methods that the trainer's going to use and whether that fits in with what you want your um, employees or what you want to learn. Um, the next point is give people opportunities to put theory into practice, because another thing that I see is a lot of people being sent on courses and then just kind of expected to somehow use that new knowledge in their role. And some people will do that because they're really proactive. They can see the links between what they've learned on the courses and what they need to do in their jobs. Um, some people need a bit more help. Um, and it's always good if you if you have sent staff on training to think about, OK, how are we going to use this now? How are they going to use this in their day-to-day their -day job? So one way to do this is to give people opportunities to practice before it really counts. So don't wait until there's like a really critical meeting um, with everybody there or where um, getting a contract or not getting it is depends on how well this individual uses their English. You know, don't. Don't use that as the first thing to practice with. Um, find find a team meeting or find something um, for the department or find something where um, they can still use their skills in a in a useful way. So it doesn't just feel like a, a practice, but it isn't as important as um, one of the more important meetings that they may later have to go to. So give people the chance to practice what they've learned. Um, before it's, it is really important for them to, to be confident and competent in using those skills. Um, 
the next thing which I've seen work in some companies not all but some companies have like a, a buddy system so if there's somebody who is either a native speaker of a language or who is more confident using another language um, giving people the opportunity to um, spend some time with that person or at least putting people in touch with one another if it's a larger organization it's harder for people to to find others in a similar situation but sometimes it really helps to learn and practice with somebody else even if it's just going for a coffee with them once every couple of weeks or you know doing something like that having a, a conversation that's where there's time for that allocated in in their day um it's not actual training it probably won't cost you anything apart from those two people's time but it can be a way for people to develop their confidence at using the other language and and putting into practice what they've learned in the training um, give people the chance to try something new with support. So this is more about um, helping people to, to push their own boundaries a bit, but in a way where they know that if, if it doesn't go as well as they hope at the beginning, there'll be someone there to, to help them. Um, I remember when I was very, um, quite at the beginning of, of my career, I, was, uh, I worked with a, a manager who was always interested in helping people to try something new or to, to do something better. And he he probably knew that I wasn't um, using my full potential in, in the job that I was in. And I, I did then leave to get another one uh, that was more challenging. But while I was there, he gave me opportunities to do things that weren't in my job description, um, but that gave me the opportunity to develop. So sometimes he would um, give me part of um, or hand over part of an update to me. So um, I would have to present to to the board at that time about something that we were doing together he would then do his part as well but like the first he said you've been leading on this you've been working on this why you know you can present it as well and so for me that was that was a good opportunity okay that was in English but I, I think you know there are opportunities for people to work together so rather than a member of staff being plunged in at the deep end you have to do this presentation all on your own um Maybe the first time they do it can be a joint presentation with somebody else or maybe they can take a section of a meeting to be responsible for that rather than the whole thing. I think sometimes there's a very much all or nothing approach to people using their new skills and what they really need is, is a bit of a safety net. So do something with a manager or another colleague for the first time and then go out into the big wide world and do it on your own. It doesn't have to be um, as as difficult the first time. And I think... Sometimes there is a bit of a, a gap in it. Some companies are really good at identifying training and sending people on training. But when it comes to implementing that training in the workplace, they just expect people to hit the ground running. Some can, but some would do better if they were given a bit of support in doing that as well. Um, another thing is, is give people alternative ways to contribute. So the person who won't shut up at meetings doesn't always have the best ideas sometimes better ideas come from people who are a bit more reflective who are a bit more quiet and who maybe don't get the opportunity to speak at meetings and that's true of whether people are operating in a language other than their first language but it, it also happens when people are using a, a second or third language um so give people opportunities in other ways if, if people um feel more confident writing sometimes then let them do that if people want to talk to you individually rather than in front of everyone else then give give them opportunities to do that it doesn't mean that um those contributions are any less valuable it just means that people have different ways to submit them and if you do that then you can open up your um well up your mind but up your team to um, to receive contributions that otherwise would just have, have gone unnoticed when all the focus was on, you know, who's happy to to speak in the meeting in, in front of everybody else. I think so much more now is moving to online communication. We have sometimes we have chats running in the meeting and that is can be really distracting, but it can also be a way to get contributions from people that otherwise may not have spoken. And I think it's definitely important that we don't lose that if, if there are people who have something that they want to say. Uh, the next point, com confidence isn't a sign of competence. And, and I often come across this with people talking about colleagues that they have who are really com confident. And, and my customers think that those people have really good English skills, but often they're just more confident. They make mistakes.
they often make accuracy mistakes um that somebody who who takes a bit longer to to look at everything probably wouldn't make um but if everything is focused on verbal communication um sometimes those, those people get left behind um, because they're too busy thinking about whether their sentence is right or not but yeah it's important to to wait sometimes you know build in time so that it's not always the first person who wants to speak that, that gets listened to, but if somebody needs a bit more time to consider what they want to say, then let them do that as well, because they may have a really good idea that you would otherwise miss. So, and and that goes for anything in terms of like, who's going to be your representative to speak to a customer or who's going to take responsibility for the tasks that happen in another language. The most confident person isn't always the best person for the job. And I think it's really important to remember that. And the last thing I I put in speech marks, make it fun, because not everybody has the same idea of fun and some of the things that companies do that should be fun. I think we've seen this in recent times with some of the, the Zoom events and what, what some um, people working in staff engagement think is fun. A lot of people just think, oh, I really don't want to do that. So it's to be taken with care you know what is actually fun but you know, if you can do something that your staff will enjoy to really kind of embed the learning and to to help them to use the skills especially if it's like a language because that's something you can organize activities in that language um again make sure that they're activities that the staff will actually enjoy otherwise you're going to be you know you're not going to achieve anything but if you can organize something that's a bit more light-hearted less work-related but still an opportunity for people to come together and to use their language skills then see if there's any any options for you to do that um you know not everybody is an extrovert and you'll never please everybody so if you if you have one activity it may not be fun for everybody but then the next time try to do a different kind of activity so at least you're making it good for some people some of the time and it's not always the same people that like the same things so find out what, what people like as well and, and get ideas from the people who will be doing the activities because then you're also more likely to, to have a good result. So just to, to go back, there were, there were 10 points there. Um, they There is also going to be a blog post about this, so I will link to that when it's ready so that you can see the 10 points as well. Um, these are primarily aimed at people who are trying to develop their staff and their use of language skills. But I think also some of these will help individuals who want to develop their own language skills and people who lead teams and are developing other kinds of skills that are not necessarily language related. So I hope that was useful. I hope there was something there that was useful for you. And um, I will be back next time with another interview. I hope you enjoyed this episode of the English with Kirsty podcast. If you have any questions or comments, my email address is kirsty at englishwithkirsty.com or you can go to www.englishwithkirsty.com slash podcast where you'll find information about the individual episodes. 